ultra processed food dangers. Now we all know that ultra processed food is bad and we all see it in the news and, and, I, and I don't know if, if, if you're watching this from another part of the country, but California is doing crazy things with it. I mean, they're, they're pushing it even further where we're about to ban Skittles, which is completely insane in my opinion. But hey, you know, that, that, that they're, they're really, you know, thinking they're looking out for the good of the public. Why do we love ultra processed foods so much and why are they so addictive? Why are they so addictive? Uh, I don't think there's anybody out there that can't agree with that. Yeah. Um, well, I love Skittles. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, there, there are several reasons for it. One, almost all highly processed foods contain the majority of which can, are, are made up of carbohydrates, highly refined carbohydrates. Yeah. The more refined a carbohydrate and is... And refined sugars. Yeah, yeah, which are also the ultimate carbohydrate. Carbohydrate. And so what happens is the faster a carbohydrate converts to blood sugar, the more it's going to bounce your blood sugar around. Yeah. So the blood sugar is going to go up when you eat that. And then because it's so highly refined, the body is going to remove that blood sugar and it goes down and pretty soon you're weak and confused and you need another cookie or another cracker or another slice of white bread. And this is in part what makes them so addictive. Plus which there is a brain connection. Glucose, which is the end product of all carbohydrates, but especially uh, the speed by which refined carbohydrates can convert to glucose, changes the brain chemistry and actually creates a pseudo addictive response. There are researchers who have claimed and claim to have proven that carbohydrate, refined carbohydrate addiction is as real and as serious and as difficult to break as heroin or cocaine or yeah. many of these other substances. Well, I believe it because I mean, you, you you see it all over, you know, and I've heard that metaphor a lot. So with obesity and type 2 diabetes and weight gain being some of the main dangers, how can nutrition help to repair the damage of people who have eaten ultra processed foods in their life? How, is there any way to kind of combat the damage that they've done to themselves? Well, there's two areas where nutrition can be extremely helpful. Yeah. Number one is helping to curb cravings for those darn carbohydrates. Yeah. And Which is like a blood sugar Well, support. that's why I developed that formula. Yeah. Um, because for many years at our uh, clinic, we have been helping people with what's called insulin resistance or syndrome X yeah. uh, conditions, which include hypoglycemia, insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, polycystic ovarian syndrome, etc. And they're all driven by excess insulin production in the body. And so that formula was designed to help modulate uh, the insulin response. So the craving, because the cravings only occur because of excess insulin. So that would be the first one. And then the next one would probably be something more to um, repair the free radical damage. Yep. And that would be a good uh, high potency antioxidant formula. Yeah. Um, NAC comes to mind, although there are many of them. Yeah. And then, of course, a good full spectrum uh, liquid or capsule. Yeah, always, always. Because yeah. keep in mind, when, you, when, you, when you're on a roller coaster of blood sugar and you, you just can't hardly wait till you get a hold of that donut, um, what do you think that's done to your body chemistry? Yeah. Screwed it all up. So anything we can do to help rebalance the synergy of the body chemistry is bound to help all by itself.